Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Niche to Profit Show here on the Vegas Video Network. Yes, yes, I see the uh, chat room is filling up. I am your host, Danny Ackerman, also known as the Danny App, and I am I'm here because I have gone through all of this stuff for two decades, and now I get to show you in the eBay world how to make a killer living um, on the not just eBay, e-commerce, all kinds of things, because uh, as you'll see, my guest today is an expert on Amazon, because we must touch on the beast too. But uh, some things that we do here are some live listing reviews. We play some games and uh, we have some fun and show you how to make a lot of money. So without further ado, I want to bring on my guest who is the author of Suspension Prevention, uh, Cynthia Stein. It's, it's Get Reinstated and Protect Your Amazon Seller Account. It's a hot topic and uh, here she is. Hey, Cynthia. Hi, Danny. Thanks hey. for inviting me. Oh, well, thanks for coming on. I know this is a, a really hot topic and uh, You've written the book on it. <laughs> yes, um, I have. I it, it just it's one of those things that it just sort of blew up last spring, and I've been working really hard to let people know what's changed at Amazon so they can be prepared and not get surprised by a suspension. Yeah, so let's let's just talk about that for a minute uh, before we kind of go in, to, you know, to your book and stuff. Um, you said this is kind of started hitting uh, Amazon sellers over this last, you know, six months to a year. Um, mm -hmm. They wake up one morning and their big old Amazon business is closed. <laughs> yes. And it's usually a really a big shock to my clients because um, many of them are very good sellers. They keep track of their performance metrics. They they say to me, I don't understand. Everything is green. Everything says 100 in Seller Central, and um, you know, and here they are suspended for reasons that they weren't even really previously aware of that they should have been paying attention to. And the reason for that is that last, um, I'm guessing, I can't tell exactly when Amazon did it because they didn't tell me, but it was probably about March or um, that's when we started to see the real uptick. By March, April, they changed the algorithm that they use for suspensions to skew towards product quality. Like they really wanted to make some changes and fix some problems that they perceived with uh, imperfect product on Amazon, right? And um, they were successful even beyond their own expectations and all kinds of people were getting suspended um, to the degree that Amazon still has an enormous backlog uh, that it's trying to get through of suspensions. So they were kind of overly successful, um, you know, finding those product problems. Yeah, and you ha it stands to reason that with the explosion of third-party sellers coming in, utilizing the fulfillment by Amazon and then doing Merchant Fulfilled, that they were going to start having some of those issues that we know eBay is pretty well known for. Um, and, and they're all about the buyer experience, man. That is, I mean, I'm an Amazon customer and I, I, I got to commend them for, you know, taking action and making sure that the site, the site, the site stays really super clean, you know, so that it is just an overall good experience, but there's, there's some things, uh, definitely happening. So what are some of the key issues that that algorithm you think is picking up that's causing these suspensions? Well, basically it's going after um, people, I'll tell you the kind of seller that gets is most vulnerable. It's going after people who do uh, retail arbitrage. It's going after people who do online arbitrage, who buy from liquidators um, and closeouts. Um, it's going after people who have product quality problems because maybe they're private label and they're importing from China. So what they're basically what they want is that when a customer opens a box and they look at the product, it's perfect and it's exactly what they ordered. It matches what's on the website and there's no surprises. They don't look at that and say, "Oh, I thought mine was blue." You know, they want it to be perfect. So 
Um, what happens though is that people who buy from some of those sources that I mentioned, you know, their inventory, um, they often have inventory that's less than perfect, either um, because they're not paying attention. Uh, speak about people who buy from liquidators who maybe don't look carefully enough to make sure that every single product is brand new and in perfect condition. Um, or, you know, if, even if they're buying retail arbitrage, you know, they may have bought uh, a toy or something and, you know, maybe the corner of the box was a little bit, you know, whatever, or they kind of said, oh, it's fine. You know, they threw it in the basket along with the 20 others. And, um, you know, but it's not fine. So that's kind of what's happening. Um, but even people who buy from wholesale sources and distributors, they can have similar issues if they're not paying attention to their inventory. Um, again, just depending on the product quality that they're getting from the manufacturer or, like I said, let's say they do private label. They may be sending inventory directly from China to an FBA warehouse and it's not being inspected by someone trustworthy. And so all of a sudden they're getting all these returns, a defective product, cheap quality, complaint, complaint, complaint. Mm -hmm. So that's what Amazon's cracking down on. Um, and uh, But it's sometimes really persnickety stuff. And, you know, people are getting suspended because their product didn't quite match the listing. You know, and sometimes they didn't, like, sometimes when they sent it in, it matched the listing, but then another seller changed the listing, and all of a sudden it doesn't match anymore. Maybe they changed the picture or they changed the description and my client missed it. Uh, I don't know about you, but I get lots of emails every day from Amazon and I don't always open them up. A lot of them I just scan. You well, know, those and, well, those changes always come in one of those, um, uh, your ASIN changed or can some of this stuff be done without you knowing it? Well, picture changes can happen without you knowing about it, which is really, really bad because um, I've seen some truly heinous picture changes. And yeah. they never send you a notice for that. And so all of a sudden, I mean, I, I mean, I've seen it where the picture they replaced it with was not even in the ballpark of the same product. Yep. Uh, sometimes sellers do that maliciously to take out their competition, for example. Oh. Um, yeah, I have a whole chapter in my book on dirty seller tricks, which, you know, I caution people, do not take this as a how-to manual. Um, <laughs> but it does, it does tell people look, these are some of the tricks that people have figured out and you need to be aware of them. So if you see it in your account, you know, you can address it um, and realize that, yeah, sometimes it is your competition. Um, but I will say 96%, I mean, a, a large number of my clients, they're, they're suspended because of stuff that they did, right? Um, and like I said, a lot of it was unintentional. They didn't know that Amazon was judging them on this stuff. Amazon has not given anyone metrics. Just, you know, like they have tons of performance metrics and they have a dashboard and you can look at it. They do not have any metrics for um, product quality. And so that's part of what I put in my book is I said, these are the new metrics, right? This is what Amazon is judging you on. They don't tell you this, but this is what you need to be looking at every single week to make sure that you don't get suspended. And um, so that's why my book is suspension prevention as opposed to, you know, reinstatement. Right, it, right. Although you do help people with that, it's it's much, much better to mm -hmm. prevent it from happening in the first place. So I have a question for you because I do retail arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Um so what is the best way you've got, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of listings? How do you keep track of to make sure that those listings are staying accurate and, and avoid these problems? Well, that's really tough. I mean, I'm like you. I have thousands of listings. Right. And um, one of the ways, of course, is keeping track of your ASIN changes. So when you get that email, what I do when I get my emails, I automatically um, uh, protest it or I disagree and then what it does to so the email, it takes me to a page on Amazon where I can see the changes in more details. Um, and so when that happens, um, you know, I can decide then when I really see the change, it's like, oh, yeah, that's fine or um, that's a problem. What I mostly see with all the ASIN changes is people 
fooling around with the weight. The weight. Yes. yes. And um, as 100% FBA, it doesn't bother me as much. Um, you know, sometimes I'll protest it, sometimes I won't. Um, I, I probably should every time because, of course, the weight affects our fees too. Right. But um, anyway, uh, so a lot of that stuff I'm like, eh, you know, okay, fine, fine. But um, what the best way you can do this is if you have thousands of products is to keep track of your problems, right? So that is to take care of your problems. So um, if you have a, um, uh, there's several reports that I recommend that people look at every week. And if you look at the imperfect orders report, for example, and then sort it by ASIN, you can see what your imperfect orders are for like the past 60 days. Mm -hmm. And if you see multiples on an ASIN, like two or three or more, um, that's the one you should zero in on and really look at, right? That's the one that you're having problems with. So you can assume that your others are probably doing okay because you're not getting returns. When you start to get returns, that's when you need to look at it and see, wait, is this a normal return? Like obviously apparel has a lot of returns for sizes and doesn't fit. Or is it one of those product quality problems where they say, oh, it's not as described, it's used, sold as new, it's counterfeit, it's, um, you know, all of that stuff. Oh, you said the, you the said the C word. That's a biggie, oh, yeah. isn't it? It is. And I'll tell you, a lot of my clients get really mad because they're like, who in the world is the buyer to tell us what's counterfeit? Okay. Um, because usually the buyer doesn't have any real idea. Um, and I will say most of the so-called counterfeit claims that my clients have are not counterfeit. The, mm -hmm. pro the product is not counterfeit. It's more likely that when the buyer opened the box, it might have been damaged in shipping, or again, it might look used depending on where they got it from. Maybe it has shelfware, maybe it's dirty, faded. Um, and so they're like, oh, it's counterfeit. Well, no, it's just old or dirty or got damaged. And, um, but what happens is Amazon says, oh, okay, you have to prove it's not counterfeit. So they make people turn in their invoices. So what if you don't have invoices to prove that it's not counterfeit? Right, because if you're going to retail arbitrage, that you're you're you've got a, a receipt. You don't have an right. invoice, right? And so that's where some of my retail arbitrage clients can get in trouble because if you buy from like a Target or most not mo a lot of major retailers their receipt is detailed enough that Amazon can look at it and they can say, oh, okay, yeah, we see that you bought, you know, 20 games at Target, you know, whatever, and you bought them new. But if you're going somewhere that has a lousy receipt, I mean, think about dollar stores, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. Um, some of those have, you know, there's no description on the receipt. It just says- Some of us are going to thrift stores. <laughs> Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I would just say that from a risk assessment point of view, that makes you vulnerable. So if you ever have problems with that product and someone says it's counterfeit, you don't have a receipt that you can show right. that it's not. So, you know, people say, oh, does this mean I can't do retail arbitrage? I'm like, no, it just means that you have to be aware of your risk. And, you know, I used to the best defense is really perfect product, you know, really good condition. Don't budge. If you have to ask yourself, oh, is that good enough to send to Amazon? Then it's not. Then it's not. Right. So that probably is, should be the biggest guide. Um, you know, I have people who buy a lot of makeup from mm. liquidations and closeouts or even just, you know, Walgreens or whatever and on sale and, uh, what they don't realize is that that might be a return. So ah. what happens is somebody might, especially with makeup, like they, they'll they take it home, they'll open it, and they'll be like, oh, you know, that shade doesn't work for me, right? That doesn't match my skin tone. So they'll take it back. They'll get their money back, and they'll put it up, you know, the, the drugstore or whatever, they'll put it on the shelf, okay? But when your customer opens that box later, the little plastic covering that keeps the powder from flying everywhere is gone. 
the little plastic around the brush is gone. There might be a fingerprint on the mirror. And the you really know. bad thing about that is it's it's a it's an emotional disgust response. So it's even worse than just something being being damaged. It's like makeup. It's like ooh. And then that's yeah. that's really gets people to go over there and complain and and say something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's like really important if you're going to sell health and beauty that you're really sure that it's new. Um, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of my clients they bought they thought it was new, it looked good, you know, and they sent it in, and it wasn't. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, you if you catch it in time. You know, if you will stop selling it immediately when you see a problem, then you're probably fine. What happened with most of my clients is they didn't stop selling the product when they were getting these returns. Yeah. They thought, oh, well, returns are just the cost of doing business, and they weren't really paying attention. And it's not because they're bad sellers. They just didn't understand that they were supposed to be paying attention to that stuff. Like, they just didn't know. Cynthia, so, Cynthia, would you say that, so let's say, because uh, uh, a lot of the eBay sellers that also do FBA are sending in like one ofs, you know, mm-hmm. they, they found one item here, one item there. So would you say they're a, they're a little bit safer in that they don't have a multiple quantity of that item that, that could have a problem? Yes, they're, they're certainly safer for most of the claims because they're not going to have problem after problem on an ASIN. Right. So because they're shallow rather than deep. Um, But uh, again, I would just caution people who buy things, like you said, from thrift stores or places where the receipt is not detailed, um, where it doesn't have the full name of the product, um, that, uh, you know, again, if somebody thinks it's counterfeit, you know, you could have a real problem because you only need one counterfeit claim. Yeah, they take that really. And, you know, they take that seriously on eBay, too. I mean, that is mm-hmm. because ultimately the big corporation is the one that, you know, legal here is counterfeit and, whoop, you know, lawsuit. Uh, so they want to, like, you know, drop that as quick as they can. Um, right. So that is definitely the one that you don't want. Um, another issue besides the quality of product I know that is um, a big issue on eBay as well is canceling transactions. Yes, that's really big. Yeah. And a lot of people, um, they think they're doing their, their customer a favor. You know, their, their customer will say, oh, you know, I, I changed my mind. Can you cancel the order? And if you're merchant fulfilling, you know, you may think, oh, sure, you know, I can do that. We haven't sent it out yet. Um, but the fact is, so they, they try to help out their, their buyer and, um, and then they get dinged for a cancellation. Yes. I had that happen. That, mm-hmm. that absolutely happened to me. And I went back and forth and back and forth with, with the, um, Amazon support. And they're saying, well, your customer should have gone and done it this way. And then like, and I, I kind of told them, I said, this really needs to be looked at because you're we're, you're asking us to have the customer go jump through some hoops that isn't a good buyer experience. But it is right. what it is for now. So got to be really careful with that. Well, that's right. And the thing is, the buyer only has like a couple of hours, you know, to do that on Amazon. And then the, the ability to cancel their order is taken away from them. So you could even say, go over here and cancel your own order. They could go over there and that and ability it's gone. is already gone. And so what I tell my, my clients, and they're like, you've got to be kidding me, is I tell them, ship the product. Tell the customer that it's already shipped. Really? Yes, and that they can refuse it. You know, in other uh... words, when it comes to their door, they can refuse it or they can retire, write, re- just so they don't open it, they can write return to sender. It'll go back. And it won't, nobody will be charged, yeah. right? It's, and, and that's the right way to do it. And um, now, if you cancel one order a few times a year, that's not a big deal. But my clients were doing it a lot. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you can't do it anymore. You can't. You just have to say, I'm sorry, it's already shipped. And, and then just tell them how to, um, re, you know, reject it and send it back. Um, that's how significantly it can impact you. And I'll tell you why they care about canceled orders. They care about them because they also target drop shippers with their, um, with the, with their, um, product quality issues. So they don't really like drop shipping 
because what happens is you don't control the product. Right. You're not doing the shipping. And so if the, the customer opens the box and they don't get what they think they're going to get or they get it late or um, it's damaged in shipping, I mean, you have no control over it. And they can have a bad customer experience. And, you know, again, you don't, you know, you can't control it. So I always tell people who drop ship, if at all possible, um, to consider purchasing product and sending it FBA instead. Yeah. Um, I, I, those who like to follow me, I am not a fan of drop shippers. It is very hard to find a drop shipper with your same standards. Yes. And, and it's not their account on the line. It's yours. So their whole thing is to just, you know, sell product. So you have to be so careful with drop shippers. Yes. I have a couple of clients who I would say do it right, but even they got suspended. And, um, wow. and when we got them reinstated, we had to, you know, there were several of their partners they had to jettison. Um, and because they just couldn't produce consistently, um, and but yeah, I think it's a it's a risky model on Amazon, and um, you know I, I get frustrated when I see all those um, like courses and stuff, and you're like drop shipping, you know it's the greatest thing ever, right. everybody should do it, and you don't have to buy inventory and all this stuff, and it's like well, yeah, it's great until you're suspended. Um, so and that's the thing, they're they uh, basically. For two of my clients, they had to say they would never drop ship again in order to get back on the platform. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. So, yeah. so Cynthia, I mean, like, we this is a topic that could just go on, you know, for hours. But yeah. um, what is what is the most important thing sellers can do today, right now, to protect themselves that you can leave us with? I think the most important thing they can do is every week, there are several reports that they should look at closely and look for problems like multiple problems on an ASIN. And one is the imperfect orders report that I told you about. One is their negative feedback report. Um, and then the other is their returns reports. And so if you do FBA, you're going to have an FBA returns. If you do merchant fulfilled, you're going to have a merchant fulfilled returns. And of course, if you do both, you'll have both. So you need to look at those returns. And you also need to look at all of your customer messages for the week and look for keywords that trigger the robots, right? So again, you know, things that counterfeit, you sold as new, um, damaged, defective, um, broken, doesn't work. I mean, those are all, to Amazon, those are all hot words. And you need to look at those hot words. You need to look at the the, you know, what's being returned and what the imperfect orders are and head it off at the pass. So I tell people, you know, if you know what's going on, if you shut down that ASIN quickly and investigate, because sometimes you check into it and, you know, it's nothing. They're just, their people are returning clothes or whatever, but sometimes it's a problem and then you need to fix it. Um, you need to either fix the product problem, it's, a, it's either a product problem, a shipping problem, or a listing problem. So you need to fix it, and then you can turn back on the listing and sell it again once you fix the problem. And if you can do that proactively, um, then you'll be fine because Amazon won't be able to, to come after you because your account will be clean. Right. It's really just, you know, running your business like a business, staying on top of things, and remembering that, I mean, the... The automation involved in Amazon is enormous. So this this is not somebody going after you. This is not personal. This is simply, you know, the the little we used to call them spiders. Do we still call them like spiders that go in there and they find and they and they and they find the the metrics that go together. And go oh boom, shut this one down. I mean, it's not yeah. personal. It's strictly about automation and just how huge this corporation is now. Yeah. So. I call them search search bots, but yeah, it's it's exactly that. It's completely automated. There's no there's no um, person behind it. Yep, yep. So Cynthia, you'll have to come to Vegas sometime and and come to the studio live. That would be really fun. I'd love to come to Vegas for a show or something sometime and um, visit uh, also and look around. 
So you, you just let me know. We'll get you in here. But in the meantime, if anybody would like to go and grab a copy of Cynthia's book, you can go. I made it really easy. Go to Danny Recommends. Dot com And I put that there in the chat for you guys. And you can go get suspension prevention, get reinstated, and protect your Amazon seller account. Cynthia, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's uh, really good information. And thank you for being willing, so willing to share. And um, I hope everybody goes and get your book and doesn't have to worry about getting suspended ever again. That would be the best thing of all. All right. And when we come back... We are going to look at a little why won't they buy item. Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation. Remember that shareyourreputation.com. And they now integrate with Shopify and WordPress with that cool little widget. And you can get 20% off for their professional services by using the code DannyDeal. Otherwise, it's free. Did I mention? Yeah, you can go over and get, you know, the the widget that you can share on your other uh, social media pages and all of that. Um, that one's free. But for the professional services, uh, I get you 20 percent off. So awesome, awesome stuff. All right, guys, it's time for Why Won't They Buy? <laughs> We have an item today from Kay Snyder. Kay, did you make it to the chat? I didn't see you over there. Um, this is a candle, candle impressions, LED outdoor basket with candle. Uh, one of the first things that it, this isn't going to hurt too much, but having a word in the title twice um, can actually mess things up a little bit with the search engine. So you want to take out the second. Um, so this is, I'm assuming that Candle Impressions is the brand. But are people shopping this brand? That's what you really have to ask yourself. Or are they looking for an outdoor candle? See, that would be my first thing. If I was going and I wanted some cool decorations for the patio, I'm going to put in outdoor candle. So let's take a look over at a search. And I put in candle impressions first to see if anybody really is looking for this candle impressions. And here's one. Um, let's go look at solds because that's what really matters, right? And let's sort those by highest first. All right. So candle impressions, we do have some. Now, did those sell because they were candle impressions or did they sell because they were flameless sconces those are pretty cool actually um this is a this is the hazards of this show is i have to look at a lot of really cool stuff yeah it's good that i look at sold stuff because i'm not tempted then to go buy it again um so there are a lot of sellers that are selling these items that do say candle impressions so this could be one of those brands and i'm not familiar with this brand so i can't tell you for sure but it could be one of those brands that you really would want to so you need to know that um but I really think outdoor candle, um, and I'm sure there's like another word for this too, other than the the basket. Uh, and maybe you guys in the chat, what what like what hits you when you see that? It's it's got maybe even kind of a tiki feel, right? People with their tiki bars outdoors. Um, the other thing that struck me right away was. I only have one picture. Now it's a good picture. It's a really good picture. But I have to go down here and let's see other and no, there's no more pictures down here either. So that is probably what is causing some of the issues. And you got some good item specifics, outdoor basket candle, weather resistant, candle impressions, got all that good stuff there. Um I'd say even with this one, I mean, it's a it's a pretty good title as it stands, except I would take out that last with candle. Um, 
but I would just get some more pictures in there. And I know you're saying, but it looks the same all the way around. I know it's crazy, right? But I still do this even on a round object, even on an object that it, you think it's just the picture is going to all be the same. Turn it, turn it. I mean, I know it seems silly, but remember if you were in a store and you were picking up this candle, you'd be turning it around. So you'd still be looking at all those sides. Also one from the top. Um, show me if that candle comes out of there. And it's an LED. I think it's it's not a real candle. It's a, it's one of those little fake candles, for better words. So you want to show that. You want to show what that candle itself looks like. And he, this would be a really cool picture to add to. Turn the lights out. Show it lit up in the dark. And that's a tricky picture to get and to look good. But if you can get that... When are people lighting these candles? At night. So they kind of want to see what this looks like. But um, it's a cool item. I think, you're, I think your price is fine because of the others I saw over there. People are willing to pay that for that brand. So I don't think this is a price issue. don't think this is a title issue. I think this is a picture issue. So, okay, I hope that helps. And so how about we get my two cents on a little eBay store? It makes me want to break out my trumpet. I did. He laughs over there. I played trumpet. First chair in high school. Marching band. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's a trumpet, but that's okay. That'd be a trombone. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually cheated when I did marching band because I could not read the music and march and remember all the moves. I didn't play. <laughs> Don't tell on me. <laughs> and I was still first chair. <laughs> I know. Eh, it's long enough, you know. Nobody can come back on me for that one. All right. I know, I know. It's all good. Well, was either like screw everybody up with the marching? Or play the wrong notes. Which should I have done? Come on. <laughs> okay, store review. Uh, this comes from Susan Berry, and her store is Buckeye Emporium. And I, I have to say, what's your main concern with your store? store? And she goes like, no sales. Okay, let's see what we can do. Um, I'll tell you the first thing I notice is that you still have the old store format or what we call the classic eBay store format. And back in the day, this was a really good thing to have. You had all of these um, promotion boxes and all this stuff. The problem is as eBay has evolved into the new eBay store format, these are kind of looking dated. I mean, somebody can come over to the store and kind of know, oh, something's different here. This is this is not how the rest of those eBay stores look. Um, so it is starting to become one of those things where people are not as attracted to go shopping and browsing when you send them to your store. Uh, so that is something I would really look at. Is um, She says she had the new one. Hi, Susan. She's in the chat. Um, had the new one and reverted back. And and so, Susan, why did you revert back? Tell me why you reverted back. Because the new version is so visual. I mean, and that is how people shop now. They are, they are visual creatures. And you can grab them with that header and that really just popping graphics message kind of a look. Um, so something to really consider. Plus, these promotion boxes are just not getting the Google love like they used to. Oh, my gosh. Used to, I mean, I did a whole course on on this eBay store format. So don't get me wrong. There was a lot of good stuff that went with this. But now it's more about you want to get Google love, you need to write guides. That's still a really good way. And uh, now eBay has the collections that... People go and they, you know, they find your store and they find your item, they add it to their collection. And, and it's just really a more Pinteresty, Instagram y visual thing we're going through right now with, with shoppers. 
So that being said, let me take a look here at your description. We offer a full line of Rada manufacturing products. I'm not familiar with those. Uh, kitchen and household items, as well as handmade jewelry. We have handmade bows and wreaths as well. We are expanding our 30-year business into eBay. One thing that has stayed the same is that customer service is a priority, which is great. Tell me about this Rada manufacturing products. Um, so, I mean, the name of the, the show is Niche to Profit. And so I'm always keen in on niche. And you've got about three separate niches right there. Whatever this Rada manufacturing products is, is that something that, oh, and somebody says, love those Rada knives. Oh, okay. So this is kind of like a culture of stuff for the kitchen, maybe. Um, whatever that is. That could be a really good niche. Um, kitchen and household items, really good niche. Um, and the Rada and that might go together, but then where you kind of lose me is in the handmade jewelry, which just does it's not the same shopper. It is somebody completely different who's not going to be interested in your other stuff. Um, look at you, Rada knives made in the USA, yeah. And so you're telling me this, and I'm going to go down here, but I'm not seeing those products until I come down a little ways. And see, this other thing, uh, if you guys can see, I mean, the pictures in this classic version are so tiny. They, they just don't compel people to come click on them and, and look. But they, oh, see, I might have to come look at some knives now. I'm like, I'm going to be cooking again. My husband's in the chat, so he's hearing me say it live live tv she's gonna cook again yes we're moving and i'm i and my director will not be invited over to dinner after that <laughs> no so knives y'all you need a good set of knives come on now I'm gonna look, you guys are already you gave testimonials over here so um could be a really good niche there if you have an ongoing supply of these but so i'm looking at your title rada gift set Obviously, people know what Rada is, pairing steak and tomato knives. Pretty good title. The eye sees it well. Your pricing's good. So this could just be, and, you know, I'm going to look at one more thing here. Let me see your other items. You know, that's what people do. You send them to your store. It only takes one item to grab them, get them to click over into that they're going to look at that listing and then this is what they're going to do they're going to go see other items so then i go and i look at your other items and it's shipping labels and ice skates and okay here's some knives but do you see how you can lose somebody with a very short attention span if you're not like niched and if you're listing things like if you listed kitchen stuff kitchen goes with the knives um, that's still going to keep their attention. They know that you're you're in that that genre of stuff. I'm also going to look here real quick at your newly listed items. So you've got the sharpener, the Rada. It looks like Rada is like a, something that you could get a lot of, but then we kind of go into some earrings. Um, yeah, and those aren't attracting customer. That starts making it a little bit more like that online yard sale kind of feel, and then people start looking at price more. You know, if, if they see all of this different stuff, then they're going to go, okay, so not truly like a professional store. I'm not going to pay as much. I'm really, this is the psychology goes on in people's mind. Whereas if they come in here and see that you are an expert on these rotten knives and kitchen stuff, they're going to break out the wallet. They trust you. They're going to go, yes, this is what I want. They're going to find a couple of things, that kind of thing. So um, if these knives are something that you can get in a continuing supply, what a great thing to market with, too. You can write, oh, my gosh, you can write uh, just blog posts that are recipes and, hey, this is the uh, knife you would use with this. Or, you know, there's videos out there of some of these chefs doing these, you know, chopping things. And, you know, people love to watch that stuff. I mean, these cooking shows. Come on. Admit it. You know you watch those and go, oh, I want to cut a tomato like him. <laughs> okay, so I do, right? Um, yeah, so this is this is 
this is a this is a good thing to look at, you know, where your niche can go and how you can build on that and not have to work so hard at trying to market every single item that you're listing, but really focus in on a, a niche of stuff. And I really would. I would go back. I would go back to the new store. Really, really would. And I didn't see if you answered me on why you had reverted back. Um, oh, she says, think I heard a rumor keywords were better but obviously not so true. Yeah, and and so here's the deal about keywords is even if keywords are better without a niche, they're not really doing anything for you. Because if you get the rod and knife person over and they're not hit with a store full of rod and knives right off the bat, it you're going to lose their interest. But if you do your marketing outside, I, and and this is my thing, guys, I don't trust that putting any keywords into the actual eBay store format is doing you any good. And what I'm talking about is those um, where you go into the meta keywords and all that, where you get to kind of fine tune what you say there. There's so much gobbledygook going on in eBay's HTML stuff. And not to mention their little battle with Google and even coming up. I mean, it's you can't count on that. I don't want you to count on that. I want you to get a niche so that you can send people to your very professional looking store where you're the expert on uh, rod and knives and kitchen stuff. You know, that really is the key now to overcome anything that's going on with eBay and, and Google and keywords and all that and trying to make that work. You can absolutely do this yourself. And... Uh, da, 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 da. I'm I'm trying I'm I'm squinting. Um, they have videos available. Should I use them? Uh, pfft, absolutely. Anytime you can use a video. Now you may need to get permission. I don't know what the structure of that company is. Um, but yeah, use video. Video is. What do you think over there, Scott? Is video important? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, video is where it's all at because it is such a, we are, we have no attention span anymore and you got to grab people's attention. Now, eh, you know, pictures, everybody's using pictures, oh, video. Now you got a video, now you're different than everybody else selling those, those rod and knives. So, and you can absolutely, you know, point people to those videos in blog posts and, you know, on Facebook and all that good stuff and, and find those people that are interested in that. But anything to do with cooking that's like, that's virtually recession proof. Everybody's going to keep cooking and it's like shoes, you know, women are going to keep buying shoes. So it's a really great niche. Knives, knives, knives. Love it. You can talk about, you know, when the new, uh, Hell's Kitchen premiere starts and all that good stuff. So yes, I watched that one. Okay. (laughs) Hey, my, my husband watches that one too. All right. All right, how about some hot sales? All right, first we have, I tell you, this thread goes on and on and on on Sundays over at the Danny App Facebook group. Um, come on over, join us and see not just the ones I, I show on the show, um, but the whole list is sometimes it's really hard to pick the ones that I'm going to show on the show. I look for a good story. You know, it's all about the good story. So this comes from Beth Kelly. I, I got to tell you, Beth, Beth, are you in the chat? I am like so proud of Beth. She has just been taking her marketing so serious and doing just everything. Boom, boom, boom. Taking action. She's got a beautiful, informative fun to read a newsletter now. Um, she's learning how to get that onto her site as blog posts. And it's just, it's, it's fantastic. She knows exactly who her customers are and she just posted how much her sales are up. So uh, I tell you, this stuff works. It works. And she says she posted this in the uh, Danny at Facebook group uh, several months ago. 
She had the jacket and the skirt listed separately, and someone recommended that she put them together. Uh, let me give you the item number if you're just listening along. It's 3714-2170-7022, and it is a St. John evening skirt suit, size 810, black Santana knit velvet cocktail. Really pretty suit. Um, I never spend that much on clothes for myself so I wouldn't have bought this one you know unless you were like giving it away but I encourage you not to do that all right so she she paid twelve dollars for this now I'd totally have bought it if I'd have seen it at the thrift store for twelve dollars so hey um but she put it together couldn't sell it separately put it together she was a little afraid to put it together because the uh skirt and the jacket are different sizes but as you ladies know we don't always have the same size on the top and the bottom. So uh, she found the perfect buyer for this, and it sold for. And you know what? I don't have the actual sold for price, Beth. You didn't share that with me. Um, she had it at three ninety seven ninety six, and uh, yeah. And I know Beth. She didn't take much less than that. So um, just realized on my notes, I didn't see what the actual selling price was. But um, really pretty, and and Beth, those pictures are phenomenal. This is how you guys want to do your pictures if you are selling clothing. Uh, just beautiful. Beautiful. And that is what sold this item. I am telling you. Um, she showed the detail, all the angles, but really just seeing what that suit was going to look like on quality, quality, quality. And that's why she got her price. All right. Next, we have from Joanne Rath. Joanne, are you in our chat today? She has this, oh, let's see. Let's pull up the original listing on this. I'll give you the item number while that's coming up. It's 1618-4802-3633. This is a Frady Cat animated black alley meow. Somebody's watching me. Um, it doesn't, okay, it, does say, it says cat. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking I didn't see cat in there. Um, wow. Look at the price she got for this. This is awesome. So she bought this cat from a local Facebook yard sale site. Oh, I scour those. I love those. And uh, she sold it last night for her. Uh, she paid a whopping $5. And she sold it for one oh four ninety five. People are crazy about their Halloween decorations. I'm telling I was actually doing a little retail arbitrage at a Walgreens because they have tons of Halloween decorations out. And they were already running sales like two weeks ago, which was a little crazy to me. But I thought, OK, um, they had like a um, a buy one, get one half off. So you do a little math. Go, oh, that makes it this much. OK. And um, there was stuff that you could triple your money on it at some really good prices. So I, I was I was doing that shopping. And people will wait till the last minute to get this stuff. So Halloween shopping is not over yet, you guys. There are still people who have not gotten costumes for their children. Yeah. I know I got that Amazon Prime two-day shipping thing going. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I know I'm not alone. People are still going to be going to the last minute getting this Halloween stuff. And you can see people will pay crazy prices. So awesome. I, I have to assume it says somebody's watching me. I'm wondering, does it play that song? That Because that's a good song. Feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, now I want this cat. Good job. Good job, Joanne. All right. We have, we have one more. Oh, we have one more. This is a good one. Robert, are you in the chat today? You have the greatest story behind this item. Okay, you're looking at this going, how in the world could this be a hot sale? Okay, no, let me tell you the story behind what was the, the hot sale. Now, I'll show you the item here uh, in a second. The hot sale is actually just one piece of this boat, but you got to love this story. I know Matt, Matt knows this story. Matt actually pulled this out of him. Um, Matt's in the chat and I was like, yeah, I was like, thank you, Matt, for pulling that story out of him. It's a great story. So he found this. He called it a derelict boat uh, this summer. He found it in a small lagoon on a river in a mud flat. He was kayaking and didn't think much of it when he passed by it at low tide. 
On the way back at high tide, he paddled up to the boat, which was partially submerged, and the very first thing he saw was the ship's bell. It was laying in the mud in shallow water, and everything in and on that wreck had a mud film on it, so it looked worthless. He researched it on Google Earth and could see the boat, discovered he could park nearby and walk to the boat at low tide. (laughs) While there, a guy motored up in a Zodiac and told him it was a Chris craft and what he should salvage from it. And so he mentioned the Morse controls heat exchanger, the transmission. And he actually, he scrapped the heat exchanger for $82 um, and $60 for the wire and aluminum. He scrapped the propeller uh, because it was too corroded to save. And still for sale is the bow rail, the propeller shaft and log, rudder shaft, bracket. I don't even know what all this stuff is. Steering wheel, gearbox, and... He followed the chain up into the blackberries and found the Danforth anchor. I mean, you gotta love this. So here's the transmission that he sold for three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Uh, very, very creative. You know, you find an old abandoned clunker or something, and then nobody's claiming it. Why not? Why not? If you know how to do that stuff and that's your niche, um, go for it. Matt would totally be all over that, wouldn't you, Matt? <laughs> I just thought that that was just like that was the best story. So awesome, awesome job, Robert. Okay, as I promised last week, let's see, do we have time for my rant? Oh, I'm gonna save my rant till next week. How's that? Because I I can't just skim through it. But I'm gonna have a little rant next week. So get ready. You're going to want to come back and hear my rant. I'm not going to go in it now. Otherwise, we wouldn't have time to do our new contest. We're going to start playing a little game each week called Pick It or Pass It. And I thought, you know, I got all this information about things and you guys want to learn it and... What better than to make you do a little research and a little homework, right? And you get to win some prizes on top of that. So this is how it's going to work. I am going to show you an item in its natural habitat. It's natural setting. The thrift shop. Okay. You need to decide first, did I pick it or did I pass it? And... That's going to be worth one entry into a drawing that we're going to do live on the air. I'm going to draw names from a hat, right? So now you have a second chance to get in on that drawing as well. In fact, get two entries. And that is with the clues that I will provide for the item. You can actually tell me what the item is. And you have to give me a little bit more than just, you know, oh, it's a mug. No, you have to be able to tell me who done it, who made it, you know, what the the brand or the pattern is, something like that. And I want to give you some good clues to go with. So this way, you do a little research. You find out what this particular item is selling for, which is going to help you with the first part of the question, right? Uh, and then we're going to pick some winners. Uh, winner. We're going to pick a winner each week. And so the way that you're going to enter this is you're going to send an email to niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. I see it right there. Should be on the screen. And give us your answer. All right? And we're going to we're going to pick the winners from that. Okay. This is the item of the way. And and if you're in the chat, yeah, I mean, don't give it away unless you want to create your own competition. I'm just saying, because I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this little creature. Let me give you the clues. So your first clue is, it's not lipstick, but you could wear this color on your lips and get it from the company who sold this pattern. All right. Clue number two. Its name commemorates both the spirit of the Philadelphia Centennial And the area where sandwich glass originated from, which is what it was designed after. Clue number three. It was discontinued in 1993. And 
I'll give you one bonus clue here. Wheaton Glass was commissioned to recreate this Roman rosette sandwich glass pattern. There are your clues. Now, to decide whether I picked it or passed it, I will tell you it was priced at $9.99 for the entire set. So there was the two, four, six, eight, <laughs> eight of those uh, goblet thingies. And this is a candlestick over here, $9.99. Did I pick it or pass it? Send your answers to niche2profit at vegasvideonetwork.com and you could win. I haven't decided what you're winning yet, but it's going to be something good. I will share that with you next week. I know you have to trust me on that one. So we're going to do this every week, guys. I'm going to have a different item for you every week and we're going to play this fun little game. All right. And no, I'm it, whether or not I listed it or not, I mean, whether or not I picked it or not, it will not be listed until after the contest. There. Oh, you think that was a clue, do you? <laughs> no, so no fair. You can't just go over to my, my site and see if it's listed. I'm going to come on to you guys. I'm not going to let that happen. All right. I have a free book alert. And the reason I'm giving you this book alert is because... This was written by one of my most favorite people and mentors, Jim Cockrum. It is his silent sales machine, and it's version 9.0. So it's brand new. If you bought it before, it's completely updated. You want to go get it again. I've made it super easy for you to go grab your copy of this book at, you ready for this? DannyLoves.me. Just go to dannyloves.me, get your copy of The Silent Sales Machine. It is all about building multiple streams of income. So um, Jim is the master at that, and I am trying to get him on the show here too So to tell you more about that. But uh, somebody would type that over in the chat for everybody. I would be ever so appreciative. Because I will fumble it, you know, me and my little quick fingers over here. So... Go grab your, your free It's only going to be free for a few days. So it's not like this is not a forever thing. If you're listening on the recording, you can still go get it if you're listening within the, a few days of, of the show. I mean, go check it out anyway and, and see. You never know when it's going to go free again. But uh, if you're watching this a year from when this aired, yeah, you never know. All right. All right, guys. It's that time again to tell you all the places you can go find the replays of the show. You can go to... I love my little list. iTunes, where we do ever so love your reviews. Uh, YouTube, it, there's two channels on YouTube you can watch the show, either on the Danny App channel and also on the Vegas Video Network channel, where you can see some of their other groovy shows. Yeah, yeah, he likes that. Uh, Roku, Stitcher, TuneIn, Chromecast, Apple TV, Google TV, Fire TV. Of course, VegasVideoNetwork.com. Yeah, another favorite over there. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Overcast.fm, all the social media places that you can go because the Vegas Video Network is just that good. That's right. That's right. All right, guys, that wraps it up for another show. We will see you next week. Now, go be profitable and make it fun.